Somebody stop me. Someone lock me up, throw away the key. Someone take my purse away from me because I have the dreaded urge to buy makeup. And oh my God, some of the makeup on my wish list right now is banging. And I'm trying, I'm trying to restrain myself because you know what? I've had so much wonderful makeup in PR and I really want to delve into that. Make sure that my wider makeup collection is not neglected. So I'm going to try my best not to buy these things, but I want to talk to you guys about them today. I want to share my wish list, things that have caught my eye, old releases and new releases. And also let me know down below what's on your wish list that you're trying not to buy, because I'll try and talk you out of it. As long as you try and taught me out of my wish list, I'll do the same for you. But just before we do jump into the video, if you have not already, like and subscribe. I upload every single day here on my YouTube channel. I love bright, fun, colourful makeup. As you can probably tell, I used the Pastel Roses Rose Delight palette on my eyes today. It was sent to me in PR and I have done a get ready with me with this look. It would have gone live a few days ago. So definitely go and check that out after this video if you were wanting to know how I did this look. I think it's really cool, really cute. I have my hair done again. Look at me staying on top of everything, but I'm stalling. I'm stalling, you know me. I wanna talk about some makeup that I really, really wanna buy. So first on the list is Cleonard Single Eyeshadows. I have seen these all over the indie eyeshadow space. And you guys know me, my staple single indie eyeshadow brand is, say it with me, the Pastel Roses. And I've noticed I have pretty much their whole inventory right now. And I wanna, I wanna expand a little bit. I wanna try new things. Don't get me wrong, I will always be uh, the Pastel Roses stan and ally and partner but i just want to see what else is out there i know a lot of project panners do love cleonard as well but they are pricey oh my gosh they are so expensive why for what reason <laughs> obviously duochromes are a lot more expensive to buy and produce than normal shades but i was not quite expecting that price tag with cleonad and it took me back a little bit i'm not gonna lie so that's probably a massive reason why i haven't bought from them i'm pretty sure they're an american brand question mark so i really don't want to be paying taxes as well as super expensive eyeshadows because that just gets very very expensive uh taxes are you kidding me customs are you kidding me it's a lot of money so this this has scared me a little bit. With the Pastel Roses, I know what I'm getting. With the staple brands that I buy from, I know what I'm getting. I know the quality. I know that I'm gonna love them. Trying a new brand is always really, really scary for me. I don't know if you guys also feel this way, but it's like a big leap. It is a little bit of a big leap and I'm just really scared to try them. Have you tried them? Let me know down below if you have a favorite shade because I'd love to know. I don't know if I will make that purchase because it's a little bit of a scary one, but I'm gonna move on because like that's a safe one to start with. Let's get in to some juicy ones. So I don't know why I want this so bad. Do you guys ever have those makeup products where you're like, I really, really wanna buy this, but it goes against all of my like makeup tastes. These are the Fenty Beauty eyeshadow sticks and there was a really beautiful taupey one. I'll put it on screen. I'll put the name on screen now because I can't quite remember the name of it. But I remember going to Boots with my mum. It was around Christmas time and I swatched a taupe Fenty Beauty eyeshadow stick and it was the most shimmery, sparkly, beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. Now, have I ever used an eyeshadow stick before? No. Would I use an eyeshadow stick on an everyday basis? Probably not, no. Do I have like Colourpop Super Shock shadows and other pressed eyeshadows that are kind of similar? Yes. So I don't know why I want this so badly. I just remember that swatch being so beautiful and sparkly and shimmery and all my dreams come true in an eyeshadow. It was a perfect everyday taupey shimmery shade. You guys may know I absolutely love my taupe shades. Maybe not uh, today. I've kind of gone rogue today, but normally if I'm going to be doing a neutral eye look, it will be cool toned taupes. I just love them so much. And this Fenty stick 
I still have dreams about it. I still have dreams. I still miss her so much. Is that like a non-purchase regret? Probably, yeah, because I still really want that. Would I ever use it though? Pro probably not. If I'm being real with myself, I probably would not use this but it was so pretty. It was so pretty and I miss her and I love her. It's like a forbidden romance. Like I can't buy you, but I still think about you every day. <laughs> is that sad? I think that's really sad. <laughs> Next is like an old reminiscent product. So, you know, get in your time machine. Let's go back in time. These are the Cover FX blush duos. These still play on my mind. When did these release? Like way back, way, 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 way back. They were so popular. All the big YouTubers were talking about these and raving about these. And on one side is a matte and on one side is a shimmer. Now I love matte blushes. I love shimmer blushes. So I would be all over these. They were like the monochromatic blush duos. These were like a staple in the makeup community back in the day and I still want them so bad. I think they do bronzers as well, but the blushes for me are the ones that really are still niggling in my brain. But you know what? The price is so expensive for what they are and I think that's what's just like made me not buy them. I've never seen them in store either and I feel like they have definitely lost popularity as time has gone on. So maybe that's another reason why I've just not been buying them, not really had that extra push to make that purchase because I feel like since the big hoo-ha about them, they've kind of died down. Everyone's kind of moved on to bigger and better things, but those blushes still play on my mind. And honestly, I am so close to going and buying one, but for a blush, I technically it's two blushes. Do I want to spend that much money on a blush? Probably not. So if there's a good sale, Maybe I'll keep my eye out on a sale. I don't even know where they're sold in the UK. Do like flannels sell them maybe? That's the big issue with things in the UK. I actually don't know where a lot of things are sold. It's so frustrating because all the American brands are always at Sephora or Ulta or anything like that. And we don't have anything like that here. And it's really difficult to try and get your hands on these things. But if I come across them, will I buy it? I don't know, maybe. Maybe I will, maybe I will buy it. I don't know, I gotta be strong. <laughs> Something else that is like way against my makeup preferences, but it's still pulling me in, an hourglass face palette. I might ask for this for my birthday or for Christmas because it's something that I've had my eye on for a while. I remember they came out with that Jaguar palette, I think. It was either a Jaguar or a Tiger. And I love big cats. You can see Oliver is in the background here. That is my childhood toy. I love big cats so much. And that palette really pulled on my heartstrings, but I think it was like 80 pounds or something like that. And at the time I didn't have my nine to five. I was just earning money on YouTube. So it was like way out of my price range, way out of my price range. <laughs> we all know that AdSense doesn't pay the best. So yeah paying 80 pound for one face palette was a lot, especially around Christmas time. I feel like it came out. I have enough to buy. I have a turkey to buy. Okay. I can't be spending 80 pound on a face palette. But these from what people say are quite subtle products. I like a big bold bronzer. I like a big bold blush. I like a beam from Space Highlight. Does this appeal to me in any way? Like practically, probably not. Aesthetically though, Girl, you got me. Oh, you got me. I think there is that niggling little voice in my head saying, you will not like this. I really don't think you'll like this. Maybe I'll buy like a single product. I know they do little mini singles. Maybe I should try one of those before I full on spend, you know, a hundred pound on a, a, on a face palette. That would be... Ooh, did you hear that stutter there? I think that was literally just anxiety at the thought of that. <laughs> I have a house mortgage to save up for, are you kidding me? But this is something that it's always been like a fantasy self. Maybe I'll do a video on like fantasy self products that I want 
but I know I don't actually want. This is definitely one of them because it's like, will I actually use a really subtle wash blush? No. Would I use a really subtle highlight or bronzer? No. I am cake face central. I am the capital of cake face land. These practically do not appeal to me at all, but aesthetically, you got me. You got me good. So next is something that I actually had a dupe for and I ended up decluttering it. This is the Pat McGrath Mothership One Subliminal Eyeshadow Palette. I had to read my notes there because that is like the title of a movie. That is a long name. And this is the taupe and blue eyeshadow palette from Pat McGrath. Now I had the revolution dupe of this. It was awful. It was so bad. It was not good at all. And actually one of you guys did say that the BYOP that I made for my everyday makeup drawer looks very similar to that. And you're so right. This is my everyday makeup drawer palette. So you can kind of see the similarities. I didn't have this Pat McGrath palette in mind when I did that, but I think what would be a really good good idea is to dupe out that palette shade for shade with my single eyeshadow collection and I'm really hoping that that will kind of squash that urge because it's 120 pound. Girl, <laughs> it's 120 pound. Eee! That is so much money. I am actually quite baffled when I look at makeup prices right now because oh my goodness me, 120 pound? For an eyeshadow palette, that is a lot. I don't think I will ever, ever be in the position to do that. Maybe not financially, but just mentally. Like, you know, mentally spending that much money on an eyeshadow palette when I have a whole inventory of eyeshadow palettes is a lot. Like, that is a huge thing to splurge on. And if I can just dupe it out, I really think that I can not buy this. I think this is a safe one to not buy because like, again, aesthetically and the look of it is so up my street, but I know I won't use it. I know I, I know I will use it, but I just won't be using it every single day in order to get my money's worth out of it. And also I've never tried Pat McGrath. So there is a little bit of that like mystery in there as well. I did swatch some Pat McGrath shades in flannels once, but Again, I could not, <laughs> I could not bring myself to purchase anything from that counter because you've got to be a, a, a different type of person than me. I'm so frugal. I freak out at buying anything. So that is a little bit of a step too far. <laughs> Next is something that I went on the hunt for and I actually don't think I can buy it anymore. So for context, the best show that I was ever in was Legally Blonde. I played Vivian Kensington in Legally Blonde and I loved every second of it. And Charlotte Tilbury had a lipstick called Miss Kensington and I was like, it's fate. I want this so badly and I wanted to buy it for when I did Legally Blonde. That was like three years ago now, which is crazy by the way. <laughs> so I'm like three years too late, but I think this is a discontinued product. I did go into the Charlotte Tilbury store in Liverpool and asked and they did say, I don't think it's around anymore, which breaks my heart. Like it actually breaks my heart. If you guys know anyone selling something like this, like let me know because I would buy it a hundred percent. I think this lipstick is so beautiful and it would just hold so many amazing memories for me. I really like buying makeup as memories. So if I go on holiday, I'd like to buy like a little something just to remember it by. People collect fridge magnets and like key rings, whereas I collect little makeup bits for my little memory box and I just think this would be such a beautiful reminder. Again, like three years too late. We're not gonna say anything. We're not gonna tell anyone. That's fine. No one needs to know that. But am I just buying this for the sentimentality and for the memories? Yes. Would I want this lipstick if it was not called Miss Kensington? Absolutely not. Could not care less probably. So that says a lot, you know. Am I actually gonna buy it? I mean, I can't buy it. So that answers that question. So next is a product that is actually a new release. So I wanted to throw a few more new releases in here as well. And this, oh, I'm a sucker for. I've gone down the rabbit hole of the clicky gloss pens. Literally on my desk right now is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Oil and Fenty brought out their own version. Now I love the gloss bomb and they have released gloss bomb sticks. Oh my goodness me. This is like they've gone inside my brain and thought, what does Caitlin want? 
and then made this. This is stunning. I love this so much. I really actually want one of these. It is not even a joke. It is a good job that I do not live in a big town anymore or a big city anymore because I would be down at Boots buying this. My local Boots and Superdrug are just getting things in from like 2014, it seems. I feel like my local Boots and Superdrug get like the rejects from all the big places. We won't have this. Like we don't have a Fenty stand. We don't have anything posh like that. We just have like Revolution Barry M collection. Take your pick. <laughs> so I'm safe on that end. I'm not gonna like rudely bump into it and then be like, oh, I'm gonna have to buy it. But this is so pretty. I would love to go and just swatch some of these because I am fully invested on this clicky pen trend. I have always said I really hate matte drying liquid lipsticks. I love a glossy lip. I've said this for an eternity and I feel like finally glossy lips are coming back in fashion again. We have ditched the liquid lipsticks long ago and comfortable glossy beautiful lips are back in style. That makes me so happy. That makes me so unbelievably happy. Happy. There is nothing worse than like hating a current trend and just feeling so left out because I was not even gonna try and pretend that I liked liquid lipsticks because my lips are sensitive. So having all of these beautiful new products come out, it's music to my ears. I used to think I didn't even like lip products it was just the time. It was it was a different world back then. But Fenty, I love, I love the gloss bombs. So these, mm, these will be so up my street. And I am trying my best not to buy them because I know, I know I buy all of them. That's the thing. You can't just buy one, especially when it comes to lip products. That's where they get you. You've got to buy them all. I mean... <sighs> hold me back guys, hold me back because I actually will. <laughs> so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is kind of like a two products in one. So who remembers the Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb Highlight? Oh my God, everyone is like, yeah, we remember that. That had everyone in a chokehold. That had everyone on tender hooks. I remember going into the Liverpool boots and then the tester section. That thing would always be banged up. That thing wanted to retire. That thing wanted to sleep for an eternity and everything else was like kind of banged up but kind of all right. The diamond bomb highlight tester, she needed to go. She needed to go every single time and that was just a testament to how much everyone wanted this thing. I swatched it a few times in store and I feel like I couldn't make the purchase because it's very glittery. It was very, very glittery and I wouldn't realistically be using it on my cheeks. I'd probably be using this as a glorified eyeshadow topper. But also Too Faced came out with a very similar thing recently and they called it the Disco Crush highlighters or eyeshadows. I don't really know what they're marketing it as, but it's a very, very similar thing, but in multiple shades. And girly, oh, this has reignited that need for the Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb. It just, it's unlocked something in my brain and it's gone, hey, you remember that thing that you wanted? Well, guess what? It's come back, baby. <laughs> I do have something kind of similar from She Glam in my makeup collection, which is kind of like a, it, sheer base but with glitter particles in it and I do use that as an eyeshadow quite a lot. I love it. I love it. I also have Colourpop Ritz which is not kind of similar but also kind of similar. It's got like a sheer base with lots of glitter in it. I would never use those as highlights. I know I would never use them as highlights. They're a little bit much but as eyeshadow Oh my gosh, yes, sign me up. Uh, but again, it's a very expensive eyeshadow. I think the Too Faced are about 30 and I think the Fenty's about 35. So for one eyeshadow, it's a lot of money. And at the time I was using the P. Louise bases as well and they always creased so much on me. And this Fenty Diamond Bomb was definitely more of a cream formula. So like that, mm -mm -mm. those two in combination, no, they would be a creasy, creasy, creasy mess on my eyes. Now I use the Urban Decay primer though, and my makeup stays all day. Like who knew that an eye primer could make such a difference? But now that I know that my eyelids aren't just super oily, maybe, maybe, oh, I still think about it. Even the fact that I'm still talking about it in the grand old year of 2024 says a lot. Because do I want this? Yeah. 
Yeah, I do. I do. I still want this. So I've got two more products to talk about and this, this is like fate. Okay. This is, this is crazy. So I've wanted the Odin's Eye Soul Moon collection for a very, very long time. And the original came out and I was like, that is gorgeous. I absolutely love that. Like I want that so bad. And then part two came out, but that is not the crazy thing. The crazy thing is I got an email from Odin's Eye and they've asked to send a few things over. I've not heard back yet, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm trying not to get too excited, but I've wanted to try more of Odin's Eye for the longest time. I do have their Christmas Eve eyeshadow palette and I love it. I love that thing so much. It is so up my street. I did do a hypothetical eyeshadow declutter where I could only keep five eyeshadow palettes. It was intense and spoilers, that palette made the cut. I will link that video up in the cards because it's such a super fun video if you wanted like a hypothetical cutthroat declutter. If you wanted to see some eyeshadow swatches and stuff like that, then definitely check that video out. But if I get a few goodies from Odin's Eye in the mail, I will literally, I could die happy, honestly. I've always wanted to try their blush and highlight formulas. I've always wanted to try more of their eyeshadows as well. So like, this is a full on pinch me kind of moment because I'm just like, me? Me, little old me, like little old me sitting in my tiny, tiny, tiny village farming town with bright ass eyeshadow, like me. <laughs> it just like, it makes me really like driven to continue do more, post more amazing content. So yeah, maybe I will be getting some Odin's eye things and that makes me so unbelievably happy. Like I can't stop smiling. Oh my gosh, like that is insane to me. So yes, it's on my wish list, and maybe, maybe I'll be getting a few things. I will definitely be making a shorts with that. I will definitely be making a video with that. I will not shut up about that if that ends up happening, mark my words. <laughs> and finally, this is the thing that I, I'm, I will probably buy. I will probably buy. I'm just a little bit gutted that I couldn't be like on it. And they are the NYX Buttermelt Blushes and Bronzers. Oh my gosh, this is another one of those things that like, America, I hate you. You got these way before we got these and all the reviews were out. It was like hyped up, it was like amazing. And then you know how things go in the beauty community. After about three days, no one's speaking about it anymore. And so we ended up getting these in the UK like a week ago, like a very, very short time ago. And by then the hype had kind of died down a little bit. People are still talking about them, but like definitely not as much. These, I wanted these straight off the bat. As soon as I saw these on Trend Mood, I was like, I need these. These look so pretty. These look so beautiful. And I couldn't get it. For the longest time, I couldn't get it. And now that we can get it, it's like, do I want it anymore? Like, yeah, I do, I do. Shocker, spoiler, yeah, I do. Actually, when I made my Beauty Bay Botanical Eyeshadow Palette order, I didn't realize that these were being sold on Beauty Bay. I would have 100% got them then. Um, Yeah, and then I made the order and I realized that they were actually being sold on Beauty Bay and I was like, ah! <laughs> That was the biggest, oh my God, that's so annoying ever because I really want these. I've seen a lot of the reviews and they all just seem straight up my street. I don't know what the pull is with these, but like aesthetically, they just look so cute. I just, I really want them so much. I love NYX as a brand. I think NYX is a really, really good, if not a little bit expensive drugstore brand. It's normally pretty consistent with their quality. And it's one of them that I'm just like, I've got my eye on you. <laughs> so here we go. Here are a few things on my wish list that I'm just, oh, I'm itching to buy, but I just, I'm, I'm holding myself back a little bit. I'm trying to be a lot more responsible. I've always been quite responsible with the makeup that I buy and things like that, but I have a massive collection and I'm starting to get more PR as well. So maybe it's not the smartest idea to be buying all of these things straight off the bat. So what did you think of this video today, guys? Let me know down below. This is where I'm gonna love you and leave you. Definitely like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video, because as I said before, I upload every day. I've got so much more fun content coming your way. I hope you do enjoy this video and I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.